How's it going everyone and welcome back to another episode of the F1 2019 career modes here on the channel. Today we are going to be taking on the Chinese Grand Prix. As you can see we've made one upgrade to the engine power. Um, so just to increase our engine a little bit more because obviously with the Honda power unit in the back of our Toro Rosso car it's not the greatest. It's one of the worst on the grid so always good to update the upgrade the engine. Um, and I have a look to see like how much the next one costs and I can't buy it yet so I decide I don't I decide not to not to do any upgrades on anything before this before this next race in China and with that let's go into qualifying Welcome to Shanghai China for what I've no doubt is going to be a fantastic F1 qualifying session and as we count down to that green light, I have to say, Anthony Davidson, that this rain is not showing any signs whatsoever of abating. I imagine we'll be looking at some last minute setup changes to better adapt these cars to the conditions. What do you think? The trouble is, Crofty, they need to be thinking about the race tomorrow. You don't want to go jacking up the ride heights and piling on a few points of extra downforce that you're not going to want in the Grand Prix itself. The Parc Ferme regulations mean that you have to make that choice. The best thing the drivers can do is adapt with the tools they have available in the cockpit. Moving the brake bias forward will help stop the rear end slipping out under braking, and opening up the differential can really help tame the oversteer on corner exit. The drivers that can make best use of these techniques will have the best chance for success here today. So here we are then at the start of qualifying, and as you can see I'm actually starting on the the sort of uh, the time screen because um, as you can see the weather the rain is going to turn from heavy rain to light rain so everyone out at the moment will be on full wet tires but towards the end of qualifying it's actually going to be intermediate conditions so I thought I'd wait it out and just see um, whether it would be good enough for intermediates and indeed it was so with three minutes left of uh, qualifying to go I head out on my first flying lap and just look at how beautifully I'm taking turn one in the wet. It's absolutely beautiful. This is the first kind of wet anything so far I've had uh, during this career mode. So uh, nice bit of uh, nice bit of um, variation. Um, we come around the final two corners though on our first lap, and as you can see, we're actually if you look at the time run at the moment, we've only got one corner left to go, and we're still only 10 seconds behind Lewis Hamilton's time which is astonishing really we take that final corner absolutely beautifully we're going to cross the line and we're going to be in p provisional p3 p3 which you know so far then my strategies worked out perfectly i haven't set a time on full wet i've gone straight out on the inters and uh, yeah and as we come around our second flying lap as you can see we've actually gained time we're actually going to do it we're actually going to finish in the top three of qualifying and we finish in oh ah well then um p14 we're gonna finish in p14 instead um of course at the time i didn't consider the fact that not exactly everyone had done laps on inters so yeah so we were p3 but when we crossed the line oh sorry after we crossed the line obviously loads of other people had done their lap it's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. We're here in the Yangtze River Delta today, home of the 16 corners that make up the Shanghai International Circuit. 54% of this 3.3 mile lap is taken at full throttle and we'll be getting up to speeds of around 200 miles an hour with DRS assisting the cars down the back straight before they break into the sharp hairpin at turn 14. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. So, let's briefly discuss Lewis Hamilton. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. 
With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Hamilton, Holkenberg, Vettel, Perez, and Kevin Magnussen, Raikkonen, Albon, Lawrence, and Faber. Stroll, Grosjean, George Russell and Robert Kubica, Norris and Devon Butler starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So we, we are on the grid now and we're actually starting in P13. So one position higher than we qualified, that's due to Devon Butler's grid penalty. So he starts at the back, ha <laughs> ha. Um, again, we go straight to the start of the race because again, the strategy the engineers told us uh, was perfect. So the five red lights are out and we are underway here in Shanghai, China and I don't get off to the best of starts as you can see Lucas Weber just gets past me like it's nothing and so does Lance Stroll. But as you can see we take the outside line on turn one and it's actually going to work a treat here because we're going to get pa back past Lance Stroll and uh, also try and make a move on Weber but now Roman Grosjean's got ahead of us instead so we've actually lost two positions there from the start and uh, how about the fact that I actually managed to start a Grand Prix without having to do flashbacks now on the next, this is the next lap as you can see me, uh, Lucas Weber and that's George Russell are three wide in turn one but I managed to get ahead and Lucas Weber also manages to get ahead of George Russell but we're now on lap three, nothing much really happened in the first two laps uh, in my race or anyone's race but I've got Lucas Weber coming up the back of me he actually made contact with me there going round the corner but now George Russell's got ahead of him and George Russell is going to try and make a move on me I try I go really defensive there trying to give him as little space as possible George Russell even raised, raised a hand of anger there we go round we go round the turn though and I I sort of like clip back and hang on the back of George Russell there my car kind of gets stuck to his real left wheel but he's made the move on me and unfortunately, yeah, it's just one of those things, the fact that the Mercedes engine is better than the Honda engine. And I've got Lucas Weber trying to get ahead of me on the next straight, uh, but in the end, he can't do anything about it. Now we move on to lap six, and we're actually in P8. We've gone on a different strategy thinking about it. Now we went on a different strategy to everyone else. The engineer strategy said start on soft and go to mediums, and I decided to switch it round and go start on mediums and go to soft. And as you can see, Lewis Hamilton was behind us um, a lot of people have made pit stops so that's why we're so far up the field but Lewis Hamilton was behind us he made a move to get ahead of us but we got back ahead of him again and now he's still behind us and we're now in P4 as more people have made the pit stops and we're closing up to the back of Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull Lewis Hamilton's still behind me still he still can't get ahead of me as you can see but we take that turn really wide and in the end Lewis Hamilton does get ahead of me but I just take it down the inside and he's back behind us again so there you go <laughs> it was an interesting race to say the least uh, from Lewis Hamilton's perspective you'll see why uh, we do stay ahead of him for now though we've got Pierre Gasly in front of us the other two cars in front I believe are Charles Leclerc and Valtteri Bottas who currently leads the Grand Prix uh, we come round the corner here though, Lewis Hamilton is behind us, uh, we're going down the straight again, he's got DRS on us, oh he won't, he hasn't now, but he will have DRS on us, and he's going to try and make a move on me again, obviously the Mercedes car is the best car on the grid right now, he gets past me again, we take it round the outside this time, and we, we do make contact with him there, but we, we go round the outside, he stays ahead of us, we bang wheels again with Lewis Hamilton, but... In the, yeah, it's a Mercedes car. There's no point in fighting with a Mercedes car if it's so much quicker than yours. But as you can see, we're gaining again on Lewis Hamilton, so he must have some sort of issue with his car. We actually banged straight into the back of his car. I'm surprised I didn't sustain any damage to my front wing. Or, in fact, I did sustain damage to my front wing from that, uh, thinking about it now. Uh, yes, because the, we get a message on the radio saying, take it easy, we can't sustain this level of damage. And we do have yellow damage to the front wing, but to be honest with you, the car didn't feel any different, so I did. I decided not to pit, uh, because I didn't need my front wing changed, in my opinion, the car felt absolutely fine. But we have lost a place now, and we're in P5, but P5, it's not net P5, because we still haven't pit, and Lewis Hamilton has pit, uh, because he's also on the medium tyres now, and he started on the softs. But we're just going round the circuit here, and as you can see, I'm keeping up with Lewis Hamilton. He is getting away from me on the straights, but at the moment, round the corners, we are really keeping up with him. Look at that, we just went straight up the back of him. He took that corner so slowly, 
and he's taking this one really slowly as well, so we managed to stay right on the back of him, into the back straight, and we're going to have DRS on him here, but we don't even need DRS because we're, we're using the slip scheme anyway, but we have DRS that obviously makes us go slightly quicker, and we actually pass Lewis Hamilton, we pass a Mercedes car on a straight. Like, what is going on? It's actually ridiculous. So, Lewis Hamilton obviously has a problem with his car here, and we back him up a lot there, that um, Hulkenberg and another car behind, which I couldn't really see, has, um, has managed to catch up as well. It's a Haas car. I believe it's Roman Grosjean, but I'm not too sure. Um, we go down now to the start-finish line, uh, straight. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what it's called. Lewis Hamilton has DRS, but he can't catch up to us. So, it's, like I say, he must have a serious issue with his car. And look, Hulkenberg is catching him up now. He's right up behind him. So, it's, it's yes, it's amazing. And now we go on to the next lap. Lewis Hamilton obviously has a problem with his car. Because look at this, he's got Roman Grosjean without DRS. It, not Roman Grosjean, sorry, Nico Hulkenberg catching up to him with DRS. And also the Haas car, also, which is Kevin Magnussen now. I've just <laughs> seen the number. Um passing him so yeah he definitely has a problem with his car and just as that's happening behind me I come into the pits for my pit stop um, which is going to be my one and only pit stop I, I believe I'm the only car that has done this strategy where, um, of starting on the mediums and going to the soft after rather than the other way around uh, because I just wanted to I don't know why I tried it I just thought it might gain me an advantage I don't know but as you can see during the pit stop they're changing my front wing. I completely forgot I had front wing damage. And I, did, I had it set to auto. So if any sort of damage on the front wing. And it's going to get changed. But that's completely screwed up my race now. Because that pit stop's taken about 5 seconds longer. Than I wanted it to. And we've come out behind Lance Stroll. And Robert Kubica. And now we've got Lucas Weber. Who's at the back of the grid. So something must have happened to his car as well. Um, we're, we're in with those three now. And uh, we, we've got past Robert Kubica fairly easily. That was on the same lap, I believe. So he's not doing very well in his Williams. And then we also get past Lance Stroll as well. So our car with the fresh tyres on obviously faring much better than the cars there with the old medium tyres. Obviously fresh softs are going to be so much better than old mediums. As we take a look at the replay of those passes, just as simple as passing Kubica on the inside of that turn and then also the same with Lance Stroll, really. My car obviously faring a lot better than theirs at this stage of the race. And to be honest, at this stage of the race, um, nothing really happened with my race. As you can see, me and Lance Stroll going wheel to wheel around the corner there with uh, with contact and everything. But I managed to get away from it. <laughs> like, that's the same corner. That's literally the same corner. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, we are faring way better. But this is further up the field, Lewis Hamilton is under pressure again, this time from Sebastian Vettel, he's got, Vettel's got past him, Sergio Perez has got past him, Hamilton is really struggling, and also, um, who's I think that's Max Verstappen behind, looking to make a move, he's got back past Perez, as Lewis Hamilton, but he's not going to be in front of Perez for long, because Perez is going to make a move down the straight, and so is Max Verstappen as well, and the Haas car, and the Alfa Romeo car, they're all looking at potentially getting this position from Lewis Hamilton. Don't know why he's still out if he's got such an issue with his car. And as you can see there, yes, uh, Perez has got back past him, Verstappen's got past him, and now we've got a Haas car, which I believe this time is Roman Grosjean, um, going past him as well. Yes, it is Grosjean. And also Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo as well, all getting past Lewis Hamilton. And that, behind him, is my teammate, Alexander Albon. And he is catching up to Hamilton as well. It's just astonishing. The reason why we're focusing so much on Lewis Hamilton, by the way, and not me, is because at this point, after getting past, um, after getting past uh, Weber, Kubica, and Stroll, nothing much happened because the next car ahead was so far ahead that I was never ever going to catch up to them. So that's why we're focusing our attention on Lewis Hamilton right now because it's a bit more interesting. He is just getting further and further down the field with every passing lap and every passing corner. That is my teammate with a Honda engine in the back of his car, get, going past the best car on the grid. Alexander Albon has indeed passed Lewis Hamilton, and I don't even know what position he's in at this point. But it's 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 not the top ten anymore. It's definitely not the top ten because 
one. I don't think Albon's got a points finish yet. I think I'm the only one who scored points for Toro Rosso. So that just based on that, yeah. Uh, but this is the end of the race now. We're on lap 14 and 14. We're going around the final two corners. Just as you can see, there's not a car in sight. The next car ahead, as you can see, is Lando Norris. And he's just too far ahead. So we come around the final corner for a pretty dismal P17. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. And Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. So as you can see then, uh, Valtteri Bottas won the Grand Prix with Charles Leclerc in second and Pierre Gasly in third. It's a bit like, it's the alternate top three, isn't it? Obviously, when you think of those three teams, you think of Hamilton, Vettel and Verstappen. But no, it was the other three that um, managed to gain the top spots. Lewis Hamilton ended up finishing in 13th place in the end. Um, so, it's absolutely mad. Uh, we finished in 17th, of course. Um, we basically swapped with those three drivers ahead of us pretty much uh, pretty dismal race for us though of course the front wing change absolutely ruining our race because well I didn't intend for it to happen to be honest with you uh, we're not, we're, we've now dropped to 17th in the in the driver standings and I completely forgot I hadn't scored a point either <laughs> I completely messed up with that one We so it's just us Williams and McLaren who are yet to score points good day today let's have your take on it You've had experience with Devon's fast, aggressive style. Any advice for the drivers he passed today? So obviously this question's about Devon Butler's race, and obviously I didn't really see much of Devon Butler's race, but I just tell them to go faster because I, I want to increase my showmanship a bit. There wasn't much between you and Lucas by the finish today. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. Um, and I decide to use this question to um, compliment my team a bit, get a bit of rep increase. It's the start of the season. How do you think things are going to go for you? Uh, well... I was never really too sure with this question, to be honest with you. Uh, I wasn't going to go with a stupid answer, so I just said you can never tell this early, to be honest. It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? And I decided not to comment on this question because neither of those answers are right. And e if I answered either of those, I would get a decrease in rep, probably. Appreciate your time. So there we go then, that is the end of the Grand Prix and as you can see, we're still going to be losing our rivalry with Alexander Albon because, well, he finished ahead of us and yeah that that's that's it really um we we got the same amount of points as in there but um in the end he stays ahead of us on uh, merit so there we go and as you can see we get a few r d points from that and i can finally select a rival as well and i actually select my former f2 teammate in lucas waver uh basically because well i've been battling him anyway so uh also i get extra respect points if um if I do beat him, so uh, yeah, it was pretty much a, a, an obvious decision, really. And then I go and decide to try and upgrade some of the engine because our engine is terrible, and uh, the engineer recommends it as well, so that is perfect. So we get the engine in two races time, which I believe is Spain, which is when every everyone really has a major upgrade of some sort. So yeah. And uh, yeah, that's going to end off the episode, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you don't want to miss anything, then hit that little bell next to the subscribe button. Until next time, peace.